Good morning, third graders. Today we are going to continue learning about using order and grouping to multiply. We're going to look at one word problem, and we're actually going to look at a couple different ways to solve it, and, and different ways we can order and group the factors to make our multiplication easier. So look at our problem in this tan-ish, yellowish box. We have Joelle bought two bags of bananas. There are nine bunches in each bag, and there are five bananas in each bunch. How many bananas did Joel buy? So I'm gonna go ahead and underline our question so I know what I'm answering. I'm trying to look for how many bananas he bought. Well, he has two bags of bananas. In each of those bags, there are nine bunches of bananas, and on each bunch, there are five bananas. So actually, if you're looking at this problem with me, you might notice that we have three factors. So let's look at modeling this. That first model, it says, think of the multiplication problem you can write, which would be two times nine times five. Now we can also use what we've learned about multiplying in any order and grouping to help make this easier. So we start with two times nine times five, that's right here. Now we're going to change the order of the numbers. We are going to switch the two and the nine. And so now we have nine times two times five. So now we're gonna group it. And remember, when we group it, that really just means we are putting two of these factors in parentheses. So I would like you to trace these parentheses with me. So we grouped it now, we have nine times two times five. So now that we have parentheses, we have to do what's in the parentheses first. So we're going to multiply the numbers in the parentheses. So we get two times five is 10. So now, now instead of whew, nine times two times five, we know that two times five is 10. And so all we have left and see how I'm bringing, sorry friends, see how I am bringing everything down? I brought my nine down, I brought my multiplication down, and since I knew that this was 10, I crossed it out and wrote 10. So now all we have left is nine times 10, and they tell us that the product is 90. So I'm gonna write that here down here. And this is actually a lot like what you're gonna do as you get older and you start working in algebra. Maybe you have older siblings in middle school or high school who are working on algebra, and this is the kind of stuff you're gonna to need to know. So let's look at the second way that we could solve this problem. It says in our model it that we could use diagrams to help us understand the problem. And, it, and these are a lot like what I started to draw. This is the kind of diagram that helps me. So, the first two diagrams show two ways you can solve the problem using just grouping. The third diagram shows how you can solve the problem by changing the order of the numbers before using grouping. So what this means is, look here, we have two times nine times five. So we see that they took the two and the nine and they multiplied it together to make 18. So go ahead and circle your product there. And then they did 18 times five, and they already found the answer for us, and they said that was 90. This time, they brought the two straight down. You can see that here, right? But what they did, and I'm gonna highlight this to make it easier. They, or they multiplied nine times five, which is 45, and 45 times two equals 90. And then what they did this time, and the last one, is they switched the two and the nine. So now we have nine times two times five, like what we did up here. They brought the nine straight down. The nine's right here. But what they did is they multiplied, and I'll change the color. Just, there we go, we'll go green. We did two times five equals 10. So then they multiplied, and I'll change the color again. Okay, they multiplied that nine times 10 to get our 90. Our product was 90. 
Do you see how our product was the same? That tells you how much that commutative property of multiplication, remember that property that tells us we can multiply in any order we want without changing the product? We did that so many different ways and they were all 90 every single time. So let's look at page 15. We are going to look at the different ways we've grouped the expression. So let's look at number 15. You can order and group the factors in the multiplication expression 2 times 9 times 5 in different ways. Look at the ways shown below and fill in the missing numbers. Friends, I know you did this in second grade. These are We're just looking at a fact family. We have 2, 9, and 5. So right here, we know that 9 times 2 times something equals 90. Which of our factors is missing? 9, we have the 9, we have the 2, and so all we're missing is the 5. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. And then we have 5 times 2 times blank equals 90. So now look and see what we have. We have our 2, we have a 5. Which of our factors is missing? The 9 is, so we're going to put the 9 here. That's all you're doing for this. So go ahead and you will do this last one on your own. Number 16. Remember that you must multiply numbers inside parentheses first. Look back at the multiplication equations in problem 15. Multiply the numbers in the parentheses, then fill the missing numbers below. So, look at our parentheses. That's what we are, we are finding the product. So for number, this first one right here, we're gonna have to look up here, nine times two. So what we could do, when we see nine times two, we could either add nine plus nine, which is 18, or we could count by two nine times. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we know that nine times two is 18. So I'm putting 18 here times five is 90. You're gonna do the same thing. Do five times two in your parentheses times the nine, and then you're going to do this one all by yourself based on what you did here. Sorry, my arrow's a little wonky. There we go. Number 17. And remember, when you're multiplying nine times five, I wanna go back here to 16, sorry. When you're multiplying this nine times five, the easiest way you're going to do that is count by fives. How many times? Count by fives nine times. All right, so go. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm going to let you do it. All right, number 17. Which of the three multiplication equations in problem 15 do you think is the easiest to solve? Explain why you think so. I really like that. I want you to tell me which one of those was easiest for you and why. Number 18 is explain how you can use grouping and multiplying in any order to make multiplication, multiplying three numbers easier. So remember, grouping is parentheses. So let's do this one together. So how do we use grouping and multiplying in any order to make these number, the multiplying three numbers easier? So we probably can, and I'm gonna write big, but and you don't have to, but let's say I can, because if you are able to switch around the numbers, I can multiply the easier numbers, first. I mean, isn't that what we can do? If we can, because for me, two and multiplying, if we look back here at two times nine times five, two times five is a lot easier for me to multiply than two times nine. So two times five, I've got that in my head. That's 10. 
but it was hard it, it might be harder to do nine times two so we can multiply in any order and we can multiply the easier numbers first whether that is because we put them in parentheses or if we move them around so that's my our answer for 18. Um, it's just a matter of making multiplication as easy as possible for you. And it's and that's okay to do because as long as you use these parentheses or you move around your factors, you're allowed to do that. All right, so then try it. Um, it says change the order of the factors and use parentheses to show one way to solve 3 times 7 times 3 then show the steps to finding the product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it first and I'm gonna reorder it. I'm gonna do three times three times seven. And I'm gonna put my equal sign. Now, I'm gonna put per, now this is what you're gonna do for 20, so pay attention, because I'm not gonna do 20 with you. For 19, I'm gonna put parentheses around two of my numbers. I'm gonna do three times three because they're smaller numbers, so I think they might be easier to multiply. So when I see three times three, I know I can count by threes three times, or I could add three three times. There's a lot of different ways to solve multiplication. I could draw three groups and put three in each. I could draw an array. Um, so I have three times three, which is and I'm gonna count by threes. Three, six, nine. So now I have nine times seven. And I'm gonna give you the answer here. Nine times seven is 63. Um, we haven't gotten, gotten to a point where we're going over all of our multiplication facts. And we're, we're practicing those uh, addition facts in reflex. And actually what I'm going to do soon is switch us all over to multiplication so we can practice and you'll end up uh, memorizing facts like this. Um, and it's a lot of fun to memorize them and very helpful. Number 20, you're going to do on your own. You're going to change the order of the factors and use parentheses to show one way to solve 4 times 9 times 2. And then you're going to show the steps to finding the product. So you just have to do what I did for number 19, but you have to do that for number 20. All right, friends, that is our mini lesson about using order and grouping to multiply for today. Thank you for tuning in and keep up the great work. Uh, make sure you do your practice and problem solving. These are paid. You're going to be doing, we're in our instruction book, 14 and 15. And it has nothing to do with our practice and problem solving, which is pages 17 to 18. And you're going to be doing a lot of similar work. All right, friends. Bye.